Welcome to 40 Minutes of Competence. Um, so today we're going to be talking about lighting. Uh, and the question you're given first, we're actually going to do several questions, so keep your, uh, keep your uh, pencils uh, sharpened. How many foot candles would be measured three feet above the floor directly below a fixture hung at a height nine feet above the floor? And you're given that it's an omnidirectional point source light, so it's spreading out in every direction equally. And it's uh, 9,000 candle power, that's, its, uh, that's, its, uh, uh, that's how much light's coming from the source. And for this, we're just kind of pretending we're in a free field. We're ignoring reflectance from room surfaces and any uh, deterioration of the light from um, uh, depreciation of lumens or, or depreciation relative to dirt or things that aren't clean. And so what we're talking about is we're talking about a, you know, a light bulb and it's at nine feet above the floor and the desk height is three feet above the floor and so we're given a height here of six feet. And with lighting, probably more than most of the other areas of um, building science, there's a bit of a, um, we'll call it a few too many things to keep track of. And so the, 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 we started way back when with a term called candle power. And, and the first three terms I'm going to talk about are measures of how much light is coming out of a lamp. So candle power is a measure of how much light is coming out of a lamp. It's based on estimated what a candle would give off. We don't use it too much anymore, but we still use it for spotlights. So we may have 100,000 candle power spotlight, and that's theoretically equal to 100,000 candles. And it's an imperial measurement, which means that we can convert to foot candles pretty easily, pretty conveniently. Um, candela is a more scientific measure of candle power. And so a historical unit of candle power is equal to 0.981 candelas. That should not be a second S there. Candela. So for all intents and purposes, we can just kind of take candle power out of our heads and recognize that candela is a measure of how much light comes from the source. Lumens, you may remember if you've taken the Amber book, is uh, also a measure of how much light comes from the source, and it's the metric version. So um, uh, one candela is equal to 13 lumens. Lumens is probably the most common metric used in the industry, but not by a lot. <laughs> There's people still use candelas, um, and, um, and the, the exam still uses candelas sometimes. So. Um, you'll be able to, you'll want to, the exam sometimes uses lumens. You'll want to be able to move um, pretty seamlessly back and forth between candelas and lumens. Now, as before, um, if you want to get the highest score on the test, stressing out about formulas and math calculations really is probably not the way to go. We do these because they do show up on the test, so why not take some of the hardest questions to get and turn them into some of the easiest? But also because if you can manipulate them quantitatively, if you can understand and really own the numbers, um, you won't have any trouble with some of the more qualitative uh, questions that come out that you see. All right, and then we have measures of how much light is striking a point in a room. Because uh, you have you know, X amount coming out of the hose, but you have a different quantity and a different metric for measuring how much is landing on a square foot of grass. Um, so uh, foot candles, that's how much light arrives at a point source, and that's imperial, and that's what we're gonna work with today. And lux, which is pretty much the same as foot candles, but it's metric, and one foot candle is approximately equivalent to 10 lux. So today we're dealing with candela, and just remember that's the source, and foot candles, that's a measure for the receiver. Now, we are given 9,000 candle power, and this is one, um, this is one that, if you're taking the test, in 2020, you probably want to memorize. I'll get, in a second, I'll get to why you don't necessarily need to memorize it uh, when ARE 5.1 comes out. But in 2020, you probably want to mem memorize this. And so this says that E, which is that 9,000 candelas, is equal to CP, which is candle power. Um, I'm sorry, E is what's falling on this point. Uh, so E is what's falling on this point. 9,000 is the candle power, and d squared is this distance squared, the distance between the, the light source and the receiver point. And as always, we don't want to just say, okay, that's a bunch of numbers and, and, and move on. We actually want to kind of
kind of take ownership of this, and we say, okay, the amount of light falling on a surface in the absence of any, any impacts from the fixture or the room or dirt or depreciation um, is relative to uh, how much we have as a source. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, that's this. Divided by this distance squared, and because of the inverse square law, because every time we double the distance, uh, we've uh, decreased the amount of light available at the surface by a factor of four. So it's a function of the inverse of the square of the distance. And it kind of makes sense. Every time we increase the distance, we've significantly um, decreased the amount of light available at that point. And if you think about sticking your eye right up to a, a flashlight um, and then going twice as far away, um, by going twice as far away, you haven't halved the amount of light hitting your eye. You've actually reduced it by three quarters down to one quarter of what it was. So continuing this, we have the 9,000 candle power that's going to go in here where it says CP. And, and I recognize, of course, um, that it's weird to just say candle power is CP, but that's how Mead does it. So if you see it in the exam, that's the most likely way you'll see it. Um, and then, um, and then if we say, okay, this distance was six feet between the nine feet height, nine foot height of the, of the lamp and the three foot height of the desk, we have a, a height of six feet and we're going to square that. And so once we square it, it's 36 and it's a pretty straightforward calculation. E, which is how much foot candles is available here is, uh, 250. So 250 foot candles and take that number 250 and put it in the back of your head because we're going to do three or four more calculations, uh, different variations on this. So it's not just the first calculation, but we're going to do others. Now, my next question to you is horizontal foot candles is a measure of light arriving from, it's not a trick question, above or the side. Go ahead and say aloud or move your cursor or point on the screen to the answer that you think. Horizontal foot candles is a measure of light arriving from blank. We will reconnect in about 10 seconds. All right, it is a true question. I lied. Horizontal foot candles is really more of a measure of light coming from above because what horizontal foot candles is, is it's if we have a point, say it's over here, um, horizontal foot candles means that we put, the, um, we put the light meter horizontally on a horizontal surface. So it's really a better measure of light coming from above. And vertical foot candles is a better measure of light coming from the side. It means that we're measuring vertical foot candles is how many uh, foot candles are present at a vertical surface. So the angle of the light becomes more important because obviously if we were, say we were looking at uh, light directly under, the light level directly under, the lamp, or if we were looking at light level way over here beyond, you can imagine that if we put the light meter flat, we're going to have more light directly under the, the, the source than we are way over here, even if that distance was the same, um, because it's grazing. When you, when you have light at a grazing angle, less of it is, is hitting a surface if that surface is not normal, not perpendicular to the source of the light. So let's do another problem. How many horizontal foot candles, horizontal foot candles, would be measured on a table three feet above the floor on a desk surface? The fixture is hung at nine feet above the floor, so it's the same as before. And in plan, the desk is five feet to the right of the fixture. So now we're not measuring directly below the light fixture instead, or the, the lamp. Instead, we're measuring uh, six feet down, but also five foot over. And again, we have an omnidirectional light uh, point source light and we have 9,000 uh, of 9,000 candle power or 9,000 candelas we'll call it. Uh, those two terms are pretty much interchangeable. So go ahead I'm going to give you uh, 60 seconds and go ahead and actually I'm going to give you 120 seconds. Go ahead and see if you can figure that one out. If you're listening on YouTube later on uh, you're going to want to hit pause here because I'm going to take out these 90 seconds. All right. So what are we talking about? So now we're saying, okay, I'm gonna be taking, I'm gonna be taking a, um, I'm gonna be taking a measurement that's 
Um, six feet down and five feet over. Six feet down and five feet over. And so one of the things we need for this is we need a uh, measure of that angle theta and we need uh, a measure of this distance d. First let's figure out theta. Now if you remember from middle school, uh, Sokotoa tells us that the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. So tangent of theta is equal to the opposite, which is this number here, 5, divided by the adjacent, which is this number here, 6. And we can take the arctangent or inverse tangent of both sides, and we see that theta is equal to the arctangent or inverse tangent, or tangent to the negative 1, of 5, 6. Now, um, that's a little difficult to do on a calculator. Not super difficult, but you may need a little refresher depending on how long it's been since you did that kind of thing. So, if you're on the demonstration exam, um, uh, and you can go there from my end card on the right-hand side and click on demonstration exam, you can get to the calculator. And what I'm doing here is the most important thing. I'm changing from uh, radians to degrees because the default for that calculator is going to be in degrees. I'm sorry, it's going to be in radians, but you want your answer in degrees. So I did 5 divided by 6 and then I typed it and then I clicked on this little number here, atan, which is the arctan. And so it tells us that the angle is uh, 40 degrees. We'll call it 40 degrees. So if we're kind of drawing it, there's the, the horizontal surface. There's a vertical surface we're going to look at later, but not worry about right now. We have our light source, and we're measuring at five feet over, and we have this theta that's going to be 40 degrees. And the formula has now changed. Instead of the instead of the light level over here, now we're trying to measure the light level over here measured on a horizontal surface because we went horizontal uh, foot candles. That's what we we're trying to find. And so um, our our e horizontal is going to be equal to cp over d squared like before but as you might imagine we have to introduce something to account for the angle that this light light is grazing and you take this angle theta and if you take the cosine of it you get the and you multiply it by the candle power and divide it by the the distance squared you get the um uh, you return the horizontal foot candles available at this point now uh, we also probably should figure out what d is, which is pretty easy from the Pythagorean theorem, because this, of course, is a right angle. We know that h squared plus r squared equals d squared. And so we know that h is 6 and r is 5. So 36 plus 25, that's 6 squared plus 5 squared, is equal to d squared. And so 61 is equal to d squared. And so d is equal to root 61. Um, and d squared is equal to 36 plus 25. That's going to come into play in a second. All right. So we have that formula. And this is also one that if you're going to be taking this in 2020, or I suspect part of 2021, um, you may want to memorize this formula. Um, and so uh, the horizontal foot candles is equal to the candle power times the cosine of this angle theta here, which is 40 degrees, uh, divided by d squared, and d is the square root of 61. And what that gives us is we take the 9,000 candle power that we were given in the formula, and we take cosine of 40 because that's this theta, and that d is, uh, sorry, that d squared rather here is just the square of this plus the square of that. So you could take root 61 and square it and get 61. But in this case, I did it as 36 plus 25, which equals 61. So D is root 61. I want you to get thrown off by this. D is the square root of 61. And 36 plus 25 is 61. So we can go back to our little calculator. And we say, OK, if we're going to do it, we want to make sure it's degrees. And we're going to type in 40, and then after typing 40, we're going to type in cosine. Because we don't want to type in, when we type in, when we hit cosine, everything in the field is going to be taking a cosine. 
We're multiplying that by 9,000, and then we're going to divide that by the distance. And the distance, sorry, the distance squared. And the distance squared is equal to, of course, 61. So this is, um, if you want a little practice using the calculator, it's a bit of a quirky calculator that's given to you on the exam, um, then um, you see you get an answer of 113. So when you run this number, when you run this out, you get 113 foot candles. More specifically, you get 113 horizontal foot candles. Now, as always, what does that mean? We're not going to just say 113 and, uh, you know, kind of uh, clap our hands and move on. We're going to say, does that make sense? And what the hell does that even mean? And it's saying that there's a certain amount of source here, in this case, 9,000 candle powers. And if we were to measure on, a, if we were to put our, um, if we were to put our um, uh, light meter flat, then we're measuring grazing light. You know, if we put our light meter like this, perpendicular to the source, that would be different. But we're putting it flat, so then we're going to account for the fact that it's flat, and we're going to account for the fact that it's got a source of, in this case, 9,000 candles or candle power. And it's divided by the square the, the uh, square of that, and we get a number that's 113. And that kind of makes sense because when we measured with the same numbers here, we got 250 straight down. And if you've ever been directly under a light that's five feet away, um, then it and it's 250 foot candles. It kind of makes sense that if we were farther away, specifically the square root of 61, which is something greater than five feet, it's closer to eight feet. So if we were close to eight feet away, um, instead of five feet, and we were measuring only horizontal, we would expect to get a lower number than 250. And we did, we got 113 horizontal foot candles, 113 horizontal foot candles. Now, this is our next question. Again, I'm gonna give you, uh, this one uh, I'm gonna give you also two minutes to answer. So go ahead and take out your pencils and your calculators, or you can use the calculator available in the demonstration exam and answer how many vertical foot candles would be measured at a point on a wall three feet above the floor. The fixture is hung at a height nine feet above the floor, and in plan, the wall is five feet to the right of the fixture, given an omnidirectional point source light and 9,000 candle power. So you have two minutes to kind of work on that one. Now we're pretty much measuring the same thing, but instead of the cosine of that angle, we're going to measure the sine of that angle. So again, we have this horizontal surface and we have this vertical surface and we have a light source, a point light source, omnidirectional, and we have this kind of 40 degree grazing angle, but this time we're, we're putting, we're angling the, we're assuming the wall kind of continues down here and we're, ang we're at this point where the desk would be we're angling the, um, the light meter vertically, and we know that the vertical foot candles is equal to the candle power divided by d squared, but this time it's a candle power times the sine of theta. So let's run those numbers out. We have our candle power times sine of theta divided by d squared. Well, we still know that d squared is, is 61, and we still know that the candle power is 9,000, so that candle power is 9,000. And we still know that the angle theta is 40. This time we're just going to take the sine of 40. And so we'll divide that by 36 plus 25 is equal to 61. And we get an answer of 95 foot candles. Specifically, we're getting 95 vertical foot candles. Again, we have to make sure that makes sense. So we're measuring how much vertically is hitting on this surface, sorry, sitting on this vertical surface. And we can compare it, it should be less than the 250 straight down that we saw before for all the reasons we discussed before. And it kind of makes sense that it's less than the horizontal foot candles here because that angle theta is 40 degrees. If it was 45 degrees, um, we would expect that, to, you know, and that was the horizontal surface and the vertical surface, we might expect them to be equal. If it was 70 degrees, we would expect the vertical foot candles to be greater than the horizontal. Uh, but because we're measuring a point that's 40 degrees and 40 degrees is less than halfway towards the, the kind of horizontal light, um, then we see that we would expect there to be a bit less than 113. And there is, in fact, there are 95 vertical foot candles. All right, now our last problem is how many horizontal foot candles 
would be measured on a table three feet above the floor on a desk surface. Same as before, except for we're doing horizontal again. The fixture, now it's a fixture. It's not a point source light. It's not a lamp. It's not a light bulb. It's a fixture. So the fixture is hung at a height nine feet above the floor. And in plane, the desk is five feet to the right of the fixture. And we're given that it has the following photometric curve. So this is a photometric curve. And it's, we're given that it, instead of 9,000 foot candles, we're given it has this photometric curve for a source. We're still five feet over, still six feet down and five feet over. So we're still at 40 degrees. But now we have a fixture. And by that, I mean there's something on top of here like this, such that the fixture is helping to determine what the angle of the uh, what the angle of the emitting light is going to cut the profile of the angle of the emitting light. So I'll go ahead and I'll give you again two minutes and see if you can figure this one out. All right. So now what we're talking about um, is we're talking about uh, a fixture on top of the light bulb, on top of the lamp, um, that's going to redirect some of the light more in one direction than another. And this is more probably similar to what happens in real life. And, and reading a photometric curve is actually a big part of this exam, being able to read that. And so a photometric curve may look like this. And the lines that you're seeing emerging now are <clears throat> the angle of the light you are measuring. And it means these kind of numbers here, 2250 and 4500 and 6750 and 9000, these are the amount of, um, these are the amount of light that's coming out of the source, in this case in candelas or candle power, um, at, uh, at a given angle. So we can see that if we're directly down, and, and we're looking at the light in section. So the light source is right here, and then it's going to, it's not about how far away you are. It kind of looks like it might describe the shape of the light. And in some ways it kind of does, but don't get too caught up in that. It's not really about the shape of the light, although it's related to the shape of the light. It's more about how much light is going to be uh, available at any given direction after we account for the fixture. So we have straight down at zero degrees, we have 9,000 candle power. Well, that's good. Uh, that's what we measured before. But in our case, because there's some kind of a uh, some kind of a uh, some kind of a hat or some kind of a fixture wrapping our lamp, wrapping our light bulb, um, when we get to angles, it's going to start to dissipate. And in our case, we're at 40 degrees. You remember this from before. So now you say, okay, 40 degrees is somewhere between 30 and 45, and a bit closer to the 45. So it's two thirds of the way towards 45 from 30. And when we see where that crosses the dark line, we see that 6,750. So there's 6,750 uh, candelas or candle power available. Now, as always, don't just take that number and run with it. Does that make sense? Well, yeah, it's less than the 9,000 directly below. And it isn't, importantly, it's not accounting for the grazing angle that we're measuring because this is independent of what we're measuring. So it's not about how much light is available at a point in the room. This is a rethinking of how much light is available emanating from the source, given that there's now a fixture on top of the, or underneath, of the, of the, uh, of the source itself. There's something else going on, something in the luminaire, something in the fixture that's, uh, that's kind of directing light in some ways and maybe shielding it or, or in others. So we have 6750, which is some fraction of 9,000 coming out, but we also have to later account for the grazing angle. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace what was 9,000 with 6750. And again, we're going to look at our, uh, we're going to look at our, um, our photometric uh, chart. But in this case, it's often shown like this. So yes, it is true that it is a, uh, it is kind of a 360 degree light, but because many luminaires, many fixtures are symmetrical uh, about the Z axis, um, what we're going to often see is we'll see the, not always, but often we'll see it as a half photometric chart. Um, so it's just showing one half of it, but it's the same thing. Um, we are measuring at 45, I'm sorry, 40 degrees, uh, which is 6750. 
Now, if we look at it that way, we say, okay, now we have 67.50 candelas. This is still square root of 61. This is still, um, this is still 40 degrees. And we can say, okay, the horizontal foot candles, that's what we're looking at, is equal to the candle power. Our new candle power is 67.50. And we still have to, even though that, even though that source, this confuses people all the time, even though that source accounts for um, how much is coming out at 40 degrees, it, it's, it's how much is coming out at 40 degrees, but that amount is still going to, you know, if you have something coming, if you have a source, if you have a source and it's coming out at 40 degrees, it's still going to be different if it's, um, uh, if it's measured here versus measured here. Um, so we're still going to take into account the, um, the cosine. Um, so now we take the cos 6750 times the cosine, uh, and the cosine of 40, and d squared is 61, and we get 85 horizontal foot candles. And again, I'll just accept that. Does that make sense? Directly below, we had 250 foot candles, and the horizontal foot candles um, without the fixture on top of the lamp, when it was just an omnidirectional point source, was 113. But now we put something on it that's shielding some of the light that would otherwise come directly at us. So now we're at 85, and that kind of makes sense. That makes sense. And we're measuring what's available at a point. Uh, now, uh, what we're looking at is we're saying, okay, um, we have uh, something less than, than 85, something less than 250 foot candles coming straight down. Now, this is the point where if you want to go start studying, you can start studying, but actually um, we have kind of, um, our question this time is pretty interesting. So I would stick around this time, even if you're used to peeling off, uh, which I normally encourage. If you are feeling juiced and you want to get started studying, normally after we cover this first portion and before we get to the questions, um, uh, I, I want to I want to send some of you away to study if you're ready, but um, but I think you should stick around this time. All right, this is our question. I got this email. Um, hopefully, it's okay that I'm sharing the name. And this pro person is brilliant. Um, I just watched this week's 40 minute session. That's last week's. And I have a question about the calculation. Just wondering why it should why it should multiply the 90 percent efficiency in the end. Doesn't it make it more expensive with a higher boiler efficiency? Seems to me it should be 1,100 divided, 11,000 divided by 0.9, since not all the gas is turned to heat. Please let me know. Well, this was really brilliant, I thought, because in fact, the formula that we're given by NCARB um, is at the dollars per year for heating. And for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, it was on last week's call. But the dollars per year for heating is equal to the BTUs per year times the fuel cost divided by the fuel heat value times the efficiency. But the problem with that is, is that if you have an efficiency of 0.9 and you have another boiler efficiency of 0.45, if this formula were correct, then the, the more efficient boiler would have a higher efficiency rating and would actually cost you more per year. It would cost you twice as much per year if you, have an, if you were losing half the heat to, to up the exhaust. So that can't be right. It, a more efficient boiler can't make it more expensive. And that never occurred to me. So that kind of thinking is what's going what's gonna to get you a pass on the exam. So anyhow, all since last week, I said, okay, if this number is efficiency and that number goes up, which would make the dollars per year go up, well, that makes no sense. So I wrote to Jared Zern, who's the uh, vice president for examination for NCARB, and I know they've been getting a, kind of a hard time lately, but I think it's worthwhile passing on how quickly they turn this around. He said, Michael, I checked and then had my team double check. And yes, the formula as listed on the reference document is incorrect. We then searched our item bank to see if this incorrect formula could have impacted anyone. The good news is that there are no ARE 5.0 operational items or ever have been that use this formula, which kind of begs the question as an aside then why is the formula on there? Because um, ARE 5.0 has been around for one, three years, but okay. Um, it was last used in use during ARE 4.0. We do have two items in a, re in a ready for a pre-testing status that would require the formula. All right, so it's still relevant. Um, a little preview. As we had, um, so anyhow, the, 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 the story is that NCARB, it, it was pointed out 
a day later to me, last, you know, so Friday it was pointed out to me, I think I forwarded it on Monday, and then by Wednesday, NCARB had already done a thorough search, and um, because they do take the integrity of the test kind of seriously. All right, and then he added, as we head into evolving the ARE for remote delivery, we're likely going to be removing the references tab. So I've been focusing a lot on these calls on the references tab, which kind of for those of you on the call is probably relevant. For those of you watching at some later point on the uh, YouTube channel, um, uh, this is pretty interesting because maybe there won't be a references tab then. Um, he goes on, we want to simplify the interface to better support candidates that may be using slightly smaller monitors. So that reference tab that has all the formulas, um, it, um, that reference tab with all the formulas, it will, um, it will uh, maybe no longer be there. The, the plan is to move any relevant formulas needed for a question to on screen as part of the question. Now, of course, that's a little crazy to me because knowing how to plug in the formula is like the easiest part. Knowing which formula to pick is much more difficult, but okay. Um, and much more important because that's real life. Uh, for the two items we have found, we are adding the corrected formula to those items. So kudos to our audience for saving the ARE. You saved it. You saved it. You should feel really good. All right. Um, for next week, this is our question. You are employing a cut and fill strategy whereby the earth you are using as compacted fill behind a retaining wall will come from excavation for a building's foundation. How much compacted soil will be available for the retaining wall? Given 230 bank cubic yards of earth will be removed for the foundation, and after excavation that becomes 300 cubic yards of loose soil, and the swell factor for the soil is 10%. All right, you're welcome as always. You're welcome to use the internet to help you out with this. It's not a closed book test around here. And that concludes um, the 40 minutes of confidence portion where I'm talking to you and um, it's going to become a two-way conversation now. I'm going to go ahead and unmute y'all uh, and we'll reconnect in about 30 seconds. Hi, I have a question regarding today's problem. Yep. Um, so I was with you until like the third uh, version you did okay. and the fourth version, I what I pretty much did was use the six seven five zero uh, number and then divided it by like d square so by 60. oh the, the last because, one yeah because isn't it like because in the chart if you see um it's like six seven five zero that angle so technically it's horizontal to the no um I mean, no. yes you would think so but it does not it does not account for for instance um, imagine okay imagine um, if we were um, imagine if we were looking at the light coming here okay um, and and I said okay you're telling me that you don't have to use sine or cosine but I would say well no we do because if we're measuring that light coming almost straight down and 10 degrees off of vertical if we're measuring that at a point on a vertical surface, it's going to be very different than if we're measuring that on a horizontal surface. So we still have to account for the grazing angle at the receiver point. In other words, we have to account for which direction we're angling or orienting our, um, our light meter. And that's why you have to account for the, uh, that's why you have to account for the, um, uh, for the sine or the cosine in this case. Any other questions? Um, yes, Mike, I have a question about like um, to use lighting for HVAC uh, uh, efficiency. Is there anywhere we can uh, you know, read about it? Yeah, I mean, um, certainly the, um, there's a couple things going on. One is that about for any, so for every, um, for every three watts, three or four watts um, of energy used for lighting, uh, I should say of power used for lighting, there's often, you know, for big buildings or buildings in warm climates, there's often gonna be about another watt that's used to cool, um, cool the light down. So in other words, 
um, if we turn if we're using four watts to cool I'm uh, sorry if we're using uh, three watts to light a space um, keeping those lights on isn't really using three watts it's actually using four watts because that light is even the fluorescent lamp that light is actually producing heat um, and if it's an incandescent lamp wow it's way more than that um, uh, but the, the, the more kind of direct link between lighting and, make, and, and HVAC is sometimes what we'll do, let me see if I can get to a little place with some room. Uh, sometimes what we'll do is we'll take um, a ceiling plenum. So here's your structural ceiling. And here's your floor. And we have a ceiling plenum and we have a light fixture. And what we need to do is we need to return air anyway back to the air handling unit. And often we're going to do it in what's called a plenum. And a plenum is just that space, as you likely know, that space that's over the, the drop ceiling but under the structural ceiling. So this kind of space in here, that's called a plenum. Um, and we need to, often we're going to take air and we're just going to draw it in we're going to take air and we're just going to have maybe a, a grill here. And so we're going to draw the room air into the plenum. Well, it will serve as return air. Somewhere else in the plenum, somewhere far away, there'll be a duct coming out of it, going back to the air handling unit. And so um, that's our way of avoiding having to run return air ducts all throughout our space. So we only have to run supply air ducts and then the return air can kind of all be handled by the plenum. Well, what we can do, it turns out, is we can make our system a little more efficient. If this is our lighting system, we can make our HVAC system a little bit more efficient in some cases, uh, in many cases, by putting the, um, the return air actually integrated into the fixture, kind of on either side of the fixture. So in that case, the return air will go, the room air will go right past the fixture. And what that does is it means that we have to cool the we have to cool the extra heat created by the fixture anyway that extra one watt for every three that we're putting out in light and if we have to cool it anyway it's better to take it suck it in uh, before it has a chance to convect and heat up the room to suck it in and return it so that the occupants are not as uncomfortable and don't have to set the thermostat lower because there's uh, little local areas of heat around each even fluorescent lamp. So that's probably one of the ways where the there's this kind of dance between the HVAC system and the lighting system. So we have a specific design light for that or yep. it's just architecture? No, a specifically designed light fixture for that. Oh, so that's great. Right, pretty clever. And it's used, if you know to look for it, you'll see it all the time. Um, you can um, you can go ahead and Google, I don't, I don't know what you call those things, but it's a integrated return grill in a light, in a light fixture or in a luminaire. If you Google that uh, and you have trouble finding something, then let me know. But it often, the, um, the, um, the, light, the light fixture is just gonna be, a I mean, the, the, there's just like a little grill of light that sits in here. And if I can find one uh, for next week, I'll show you guys a picture of it.